bear with me on this one. It's been uh, an interesting week, shall we say. And I'm starting to learn that attitude is very important, almost in a way similar to like the whole manifestation thing. Manifestation? Manifestation? Whatever. In that, if you try and have a positive can-do attitude to stuff and like believe it and feel it, I think things start to come round. It does take a while, don't get me wrong, it does take a while, but I think like everything, it's almost like, I don't know, you have to find your place or you have to find your people kind of thing. But anyway, those who have been following me for a long time will know that pretty much this time last year, 12 months ago, I had spinal surgery. Um, in all fairness, it's been pretty well up until last weekend, Saturday. My brother has got a 1978 Ford Mustang. It's not a runner yet, but we had to move it from where it was to where it is now, which required towing it and pushing it. <laughs> it's a heavy car. He's got a spare engine in it, so it's already got two V6, V6, V8 engines in it. And uh, all four flat tires so obviously it was a big chunk of metal and we had to push it and I realized whilst pushing it something didn't feel too clever in my back now it's my own fault because I come from a very sort of stubborn family shall we say where we're too proud to ask for help so it was just me and my dad trying to push my brother's car while my brother steers it and it really wasn't working too well I felt something kind of bang in my back and I stood up and I walked away for a break and I basically felt like I'd done undone all of my surgery that I had 12 months ago I was in absolute agony I nearly passed out through pain um, just standing next to the car and it's been a very interesting week thankfully that was on the Saturday, so Saturday to Sunday was a big change in how it all felt. Uh, Sunday to Monday, Monday, Tuesday, yada, yada, yada. It's been slowly getting better, but touch wood, I'm praying it's just inflammation and it's like overexerted it, which is the first time it's really been pushed that hard in 12 months. I don't know, but I won't lie, when it first went bang, it crushed me. It really, really crushed me because that pain is like no pain I've ever felt before. And from when I first felt that pain to when I was able to get my surgery, it was six months. And I'm very, very lucky and grateful that I was able to get seen that quick. But it was agonizing and I basically couldn't do a lot. So to have that feeling again and to feel that it's gonna risk the job that I actually enjoy and my quality of life from that point in time until whenever it's fixed. It, it can really sink your mood. Like it really did sink my mood anyway. It, it pretty much, it really slammed me. But I tried to stay positive and I tried to kind of talk to myself, say, you know, it's the first time it's done anything for a long, long time. Fingers crossed it's not just gone bang, but it's your body kind of tell you hey come on now don't be stupid this is way outside of our possibilities right now we've not done anything this big for a very long time let's not just jump into it uh, a little part of me has kind of made a deal with every and any sort of entity that's out there to say look just please please just let this be a warning to my body don't let it have undone the surgery let's be a warning and hopefully that is fingers crossed how it's kind of played out but to go in towards the, the attitude direction and stuff, I've always tried to have a can-do attitude at work and learn what I can learn and help what I can help and do, you know, weirdly enough, extra stuff if I can do extra stuff. And I think I've found a place now where it fits. Uh, the guys that I work for seem very positive. They're very pleased, obviously, as most bosses would be, that, you know, there's something about me where I'm willing. And it's potentially coming back good for me, like in a positive way. I might have mentioned it a while back actually, 
about how I felt that I was taking on all this responsibility and I was like, you know, wondering if I was gonna kind of see anything come back to me for doing this stuff and having a little quick chat. There's a, there's a good potential that I should. My review, I get a six month review, happens in a couple of weeks actually. So that'd be good. 9th of June actually, that's when it is. So that'd be nice and they've kind of already took me to one side and had a little whisper in my ear and then things are positive. And then I was talking to two other members of staff or, or the other members of staff today. And I noticed that they kind of have this attitude of minimum wage, minimum work, which I, it's weird because I understand their side of it, but at the same time, it's a double-edged sword of, I get paid minimum wage, so I'm gonna do minimum work. So as a boss, why would I then pay you more money based on your work output? It's a very chicken and egg situation of what happens first. If you get paid more money, are you gonna do more work? Or do you do more work in order to show your worth to get paid more money? And I think it comes down to attitude because speaking to these guys, they were very much, you know, oh, we don't care kind of thing. And it was around waste of product where somebody had used materials to make a product, but they'd like weighed out too much material. So they were able to make an entire different product, which was the equivalent of like four hours wage price wise is basically how much material they had wasted. And I just kind of said like, do you not think if you didn't waste so much material, then there'd be more money there so that potentially there could be a chance that you get paid more money. And all I got told was, come on now, you're a millennial. You know that money doesn't filter down. That's not how it works. And this kind of stuff. And it's like trying to, trying to separate your own personal attitude towards stuff and see somebody else's attitude. And in that situation, it's really tricky because I feel that a business only has the money that it has based on the product that it sells, its profit margins and its waste. Obviously, the more materials or whatever it's wasting, the more it has to buy out, the more it has to buy in, sorry, therefore the less actual money there is because yada, yada, yada. And I've always felt in a workplace that if you can reduce the waste, then you're kind of onto a winner in some regards. Like obviously the amount of stuff that you waste, you then realize that you're maximizing the usage out of stuff and all nonsense like that. But I kind of find it really interesting of this money doesn't filter down to us. And I, I understand it, but at the same time, a business will always have margins where if they can see a good increase in how much money they're taking, they will eventually start to pay more money to their workers. Like these two guys that I work for have been very, very straightforward and honest and said they, they wanna take people on board who are gonna grow with the company and they wanna try and benefit us as staff as much as we benefit the company. And for me especially, I have felt that. They've decided that they wanna run me through loads of different courses. There's you know, so much positivity that I get from these two guys for my own personal growth. And it's all because I've had this like willing attitude to try and, you know, in a way go the extra mile and show my worth or, you know, do little extra bits. And I just think that attitude makes a big difference. Feels like it's kind of been my internal motto in a way in the last probably 18 months. Uh, I've just kind of tried to be more like true and straight and just, I don't know, real and helpful about stuff. And it's taken its time, for sure it's taken its time, but I've really tried to to embrace the meaning of it, and like literally feel the meaning. You know, like what I was saying earlier about manifestation, people say you, you literally have to like, you know, manifest whatever it is that you want and in some regards, act like you're already in that position. And it is like that, and it takes its time, but I feel that it is something that is true. And since I've tried to internalize a positive attitude, I think that's the thing. It has felt externally that things have, 
seemed more on that positive side of the line, shall we say. Because I, I can throw out a positive when I'm at work and stuff and that can-do attitude, but internally I can be just down, I can be so really broken. And I try to manage my, whatever you want to say, bipolar, manic depressive, they're all things that I've been coined with, just as, as stupid and as cliche as it is just by cheering up. And I don't want that to sound as blasé as it does because, you know, when you're going through stuff and stuff, it, it covers such a range, having a, a smile and a stiff upper lip doesn't cut it. I know it doesn't cut it. And I know how stupid it sounds by just saying cheer up. Believe me, I, when I was at one of my lowest points, I literally had a friend turn to me and was just like, oh, why don't you just cheer up? And it makes everything so much worse. It really does. But I also feel that you get to points in life where you don't want to feel like that anymore. You don't want to feel all that darkness, all that negativity. And I think when it really, really matters, when it really, really gets down to it, you feel that there's only really two options. And one of them is something has to change in your living life. And the other one is to, yeah, you know? And I don't ever feel that that's the right option. So something has to change. I genuinely believe that we are so lucky to be here. Like the chances of us being in existence or what we feel is existence is so ridiculously wild of a chance. As stupid as it sounds, <laughs> I feel that I owe whatever I do in life to all those that didn't make it. You know, we were all in the same race and I was the one that made it. And I kind of feel that if I just decided to throw it all away, that kind of shits on all the others because they could have had a, a better go at it, but they didn't get the chance. So then why should I, you know, ruin the such a rare chance at it? I don't know. So as dumb as it is, and it takes a lot of time, and it's not about everything, don't get me wrong, having a better outlook or trying to have a better outlook is where it started for me. And then internalizing it, because I think it's easy, like I say, to have that externally and seem like everything's great. That's that's what depressives are really good at. Like they, they look like everything's fine on the outside, but it's the internal monologue. It's what happens in the head that that can really bring you down. And I think being able to silence some of those negative voices and start to turn them around to the point where your own, your own voice, that little darkness in your head starts to become your little support. And I think it, it makes a difference and it doesn't, it doesn't heal everything. It doesn't solve every issue and it doesn't make problems go away. But I think it helps you ride the strength from somewhere. You, you kind of, you're fed up of being at rock bottom. You're fed up of being low and it, it's just a little part of you just kind of starts to lift you. And you get a little bit of lift and a little bit of lift and a little bit of lift. And eventually you start believing in it. And it is that belief. Self-belief is wild. And the problem that I have is having self-belief without it being a cockiness or an arrogance uh, because I've always been that little guy with low self-esteem and everything else I worry that if I start to have a little bit of belief in myself I'm gonna like it's gonna come out of me in a kind of arrogant or cocky way and I don't want that but so far touch wood I feel that things are moving in the right direction, shall we say. It's like running a marathon and we're into the first mile. 20, whatever it is, six miles to go. But you know, first mile, we're feeling like we're going well. I hope everybody's doing well anyway. It's nice to talk to you guys. I always wonder what I'm gonna say on these videos and then I turn the camera on and just something rushes to the brain and it's usually waffling nonsense, but 
I appreciate you all for watching and listening. Like I say, you guys help me quite a lot. Well, I hope you have a good week. I hope your days are going well. I hope you can find joy in the simple things. Cheers, guys. Bye.